in the building back in the building we are on zoom as you see as you know um i'm happy to be back i know we took last week off but guys we're in for a special treat here i'm going to intro our guest of the day that we do not have working on that if you want to be a guest on guru punch pod let us know hit the twitter page hit the email hit the ig we even got a tiktok let us know. You could be right here next to us virtually. Pass it off to Ron and G. Stanley. Tell us what you got. You know, I just heard some news the other day, and we're actually, we're the number one podcast of injured reserve players in the fucking oh. state. We hey, are I knew that. You knew something I didn't know. We have the number one rated podcast. Of injured reserve players in the nation, in the world, actually. Bro. That's something. Yeah. That's, that's a, something. Uh, I, I would say that's. I'm not gonna say it's one of the best, top five things I'm proud of in bro, my life. I think the injured reserve all pro team this year might be better than the healthy all pro teams. I uh, think there be. I think that would be a good matchup. There are so many hurt players this year. It's actually crazy. Let's see. Besides our team. Besides our team, bro, it goes down the list. That's all I don't like. Obviously. Then a star just got – well, when does it come that cut off at, like – it's like, you know, what, I hurt myself, what, with, like, four games left maybe? Like, it gets to a point because Chris Godwin got hurt last night towards ACL. Great player. Trained with him pre-draft. Great and it's – well, side note of, of him getting injured. Craziest thing he said, he was like – we were like, bro, why'd, like, why'd you leave early? Like – Cause not why like disrespectfully he was like my grade wasn't a first or second round pick grade. We were like so why'd you leave early? He was like bro I don't think that really matters. I think you get in the league and you ball and then you get yourself a sec- a big second contract. That's what I think I'm gonna do. Fast forward, dude does that gets to well he's gonna he did the franchise tag this year which is still a big bag, but he was gonna get a big deal probably still will get a big deal, but that was a story anyway. He just got hurt last night, but there's only what two games left. Two games left, or three. Yeah. So it's like some people are getting hurt at the end, to where it's like uh, you really still did the full season, and just won't help the playoffs. But it hurts either way. But yeah, I know True Davis White got hurt. Baller, Baller. Jared Alexander's been hurt for a minute, but I think he's coming back. Jared's been hurt. Yeah, I mean a lot of guys, a lot of guys, but. Many. Shout out to the number one podcast for the IR team. Um, we're doing big things. Guys, if if you guys have been wondering what Kevin looks like, this is Kevin in the flesh. Kevin, say something to the people. Man. This is me. What's up, guys? Uh, it's great to finally meet face-to-face. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess this is it. <laughs> oh, man. He's out of the shadows, out of the shadows. Uh, Kevin's going to introduce us with the first topic of the day, as you, we all saw. It made headliners, but nobody was too surprised, but I was still kind of surprised. But, Kevin, talk to us. Uh, So the first topic, uh, Urban Mayer, uh, the former head coach of the Jaguars, was fired. What's his name? What? what, what? Urban Mayer. Oh, yeah. Did I mess that up? Kev, that's okay. okay. Um, Urban Mayer got fired. Ronnie, what do you – do you should I start or do you want to start here? Because I, I got a lot to say. Urban Meyer got fired. Yes. And you know, something had to change. You know, I don't think the players were happy. If you have out speaking out in public Twitter about things, you know, not seeming right with their coach, that, there's a real problem. You know, so I'm just I'm just you know, hopeful for the players, you know, that they get what they need. Got a good young quarterback, good team. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. You know, you can't just you can't just come from college and expect success in the NFL. It's a totally different vibe. Yeah. Can't I, be I, a college guy. 
one of the things I thought about was I felt for the guys because I just, you know, what, you know, things I thought of were what things fans and typical people did not think of. You think about how I didn't know Urban didn't do it on purpose, but he essentially, some people had one-year deals on that team. They didn't get the results they wanted because of the head coach and it trickled down. Now this guy has no film for another team to pick him up. So many obstacles. Some of those guys could never play in the league again, and it would really be a testament to the failure that Urban Meyer did with his lack of production, lack of, you know, doing things right. And it just sucks for those guys. But, like, I, I, I felt for those guys. But, man, he, he was a wild guy. Um, I, I met, I've met Urban before. He, he seemed all right. Um, college, what, three national championships, I think? I mean, his college okay. resume does not – it's serious. But I, I, you know, I guess it just didn't – I was not there, so I don't know what was going on. But I kind of did hear some stuff from some pretty reliable sources. And uh, the wildest thing was kicking that kicker, like physically kicking him. Did that uh, really – someone tell you, like, they saw that? No, 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 no. That he <laughs> – I need to ask my buddy that would know. But uh, I think he did kick that guy, like in the butt or in the in the in the chest. Or it probably wasn't a, <clears throat> like a kick that hurt. But man, you still just can't. That sounded like something he that that sounds like a college. You you cannot literally kick somebody. And not a grown man. Yeah, you just can't do that. And you still shouldn't be doing that to college kids. But you know, definitely in college, the rules are are way more bendable. Yeah. It's like in college, it, it turns into like he said, she said. In the NFL, like if you say, if I come out and say, "Hey, this guy kicked me," people are actually going to believe me. In college, they're going to be like, "He didn't kick me." Like people just yeah. don't. College, you don't really have a voice. Yeah, you have no voice in college. It's kind of sad. But, it is. Uh, they get paid now, so that's good. They do get paid. What does Urban Meyer do next? He goes back to college. In uh, my opinion, I think he's done. Someone's going to hire him, bro. There's enough teams that are desperate enough, I, I think. And I'm not saying, like, this year. I'm saying, like, it's going to take maybe two years. Let the, let the you know, media die down. But someone's going to hire him eventually. He, his resume in college speaks for itself, you know. I would, I would definitely want maybe to this hire him. Too, or maybe you never know. But you won't know till you know. And some some college is going to say that to themselves at some point. No, I, I someone's going to take a chance. Not an NFL. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would for sure hire the guy. I mean, he clearly can do it in college. He just NFL is a different ball game. I mean, if you played in the NFL, been around the NFL, you know that. I mean, I think even the the fan that doesn't know much about ball. It's just different ball game, salary cap, keeping keeping guys happy and environment and down the line. But I think he should just take some time off. He clearly loves the game because he keeps coming back even though when he retires. I think he's just commentate for the rest of his time. By far, easiest way. Be around the game, do the thing, boom, boom. Yeah, that could be but, an option. What about your boy, my boy, Deion Sanders? Making moves, bro. He's he's making waves in the in the uh, ocean. Major waves. He is. Uh, I will say, I, what he's doing. I think he just lost yesterday, the other day. But what he's doing is, it is kind of surprising. I don't know if it's surprising though. Like, it's not, it is, it's, is it? I mean, it's a little surprising, but I think with the NIL, with the college student getting paid, it's not as surprising because he could still get paid as much as he would at a good D1 school. Cool, yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, this, like, is, this, is, this is why I, it's not like crazy surprising to me. The, you're, your goal of going to college is for, well, 
what it's supposed to be is get an education, win a national championship, go to the NFL, right? Isn't that what it's like supposed to be, you know? But mom was really like, go to the NFL, you know what I mean? Like, win a national championship, and then what was, what was oh, get an education, you know what I mean? So kind of yeah. reverse order, essentially. So, like, Dion comes to your home. You're like, okay, Jackson State. Like, have they done much? Uh, NFL. But Dion knows what it takes to get in the NFL. So it's like he's, he's not going to put you in the wrong way. And you know. just find the talent no matter where you're at. Darius Leonard, he went to an HBCU. Wait, is that HBCU? Is that SC's? I don't even know what's HBCU or what's not HBCU. But he went to a smaller school, best linebacker in the league. So it doesn't about matter where you go. And Dion knows he's going to develop them the right way. Yeah. He's yeah. going to, you know, progress his game. Yeah. Um, I mean, you put good, good coaches around, you know, good talent, good things will happen. Yeah, I think, I think so, too. I mean, I think, I think that kid will be fine. Um, I, I, he, he just looked – I think he's a wide receiver, right? I think he wants to be a DB, though. To, that's – I was literally about to just say that. I was about to say he just looks like he has that vibe. That he no, he, he plays DB as well in high school. He plays both positions. He plays uh, both. Uh, yeah, both. He, he looks like – he looks like a top 20 corner, like, in the draft. Uh, he just looks – he has that, that nice look to him. And, like, if you just look at a football field, if you look at the best-looking athletes on the field, what position? <laughs> corner. Huh? Probably defensive end. No. Wait, what, what do you mean? The look – okay, 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 okay. Besides Miles Garrett. Bro, there's a lot of defenses that that's probably that's probably the most like athletic okay. position. Athletic for their position, yes, but I'm just saying as far as just the look, like look at the person, how they look. Defensive end, hundred percent. That's like asking you to stand next to Dafe and be like, okay, who looks more like a okay Dafe? Okay, da- okay, Dafe doesn't count. You you pick like the there's okay, no. Dafe- be on our team that looks better than Dafe, like as a very true. Okay, okay. Dafe is like Miles. Dafe is like in that Miles Garrett category. For the most part, their DN, like their star DN, is like that, bro. Like, there's there's guys like that on almost every team. I mean, at least eighty percent team have a star pass rusher. It's a Darius Smith. You yeah, but I mean? they don't look. They don't look all. That dude from the Bengals, Trey Henderson. Henderson, he looks yeah. like normal Joe Blow. Okay, that's why I said 80, 90 percent, bro. Does TJ Watt look like an animal? <laughs> Turn this phone. Somebody answer the phone. Did you get your house phone under control? I thought we we were done. With those. My mom's. My mom's still. Oh yeah, my mom still does the house phone thing. I I I understand. I understand. That makes sense. You got to send the spam number somewhere. You send it to the house phone. Yeah, I get the spam calls on my phone, and we've talked about this before. Always answer your non. Always answer the calls, no matter what. You never know who it could be. Um, yeah. Shout out to Deion Sanders. He's doing big things. Um, what else? Kev. Talk to us. Uh, there's also Steph Curry overtakes Ray Allen uh, for the most all-time three-pointers. There's not much to talk about here. Best shooter of all time, period. I don't want to hear this best three-point shooter. Best shooter. No, he's the best shooter of all time. I had, I had a wild thought the other day. Bro, I had a wild thought, and I sat there and I said... Is Steph Curry better than LeBron James? And what'd you come up with? Bro, it it dawned on me. I'm sitting here like, all right, this dude's what, going to play for probably – I mean, he's not – Who is anyone calling Steph Curry old? (laughs) Like, no. No one. So, like, he's going to completely 
strange. I don't know. But he's not. He's. He's not even like LeBron James. People are saying, okay, LeBron James is getting old. Steph Curry ain't nowhere near old. So he's about to keep going for a minute. Steph Curry is a goat in his own right. LeBron is a goat in his own right. No, but you know, like, I, I mean, I'm not one of those like kids that are like, oh, he's the best ever and like weird about it. But I'm just saying, I'm like, bro. No, nah, he's the best shooter ever, bro. Bro, but like, best shooter, best, best shooter player. Bro, but like the objective is to score points. The objective is to win, and you need to play defense, and you need to pass, you need to set picks, you need to do all that. His specialty and thing that he scoring leads. points, which is the most, that's the most important. Though. That's what I'm saying. Le- LeBron is like all around. He does this rebounding. He does the defense. He does all this stuff. That's what makes him, you know, a goat in his own right. But Steph is just a, he's like a bro. He's like a sniper. Bro, literally, like, a guy on your team. So are you going to say, I don't know. Bro, I'm telling you, it, when you when you really just, like, think about it for a second, you really kind of catch – like, I, it, it caught me by surprise. I was like, bro. Def- bro, I think LeBron's a better all-around player. Steph Curry's a, a shooter, a freak shooter. Like, he's a – he doesn't – and Kevin somewhere in between. No, Kevin Kevin Durant be going crazy. Kevin That's Durant like, is. Are you going to say Steph's better than Kevin? Huh? Are you trying to say Steph's better than Kevin? Steph's better than Kevin. <sighs> Steph is Steph, the. I, I guess it really is. I, I guess you said it best. It's like. Goats in their own rights. Like you really just can't say a dude's best. Like they're just great. Like you can't really categorize them as like who's the best. Like they're just great. He's the best shooter, though. You can categorize that. Oh, he, you can categorize that for sure. On his yeah. resume, best shooter in the world. Yeah, in the wise words of Earl Thomas, that's documented. It's documented, bro. Yeah. Shout out my ET. ET in the house, man. All right, so <laughs> let's get to the man. Let's get to the man. When you get ET on the show, he come on. Can we get to the main event? What we got? Your boy, Jake Paul? Hey, look. He don't- I'm sure. Bro, did you watch the fight? I watched the highlight. I didn't pay for it, bro. I'm not going to cap. I ain't going to cap. I pay for it. And I'm paying for it every time. Bro. Cap. This man... Jake, first off, I'm watching the fight. Me, my sister, both me and both my sisters. <clears throat> Those, I'm like, yo, uh, dang, I can't even think of the other dude's name right now. Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley. I'm like, I'm like, dang, Tyron Woodley kind of getting that, Jake. I'm like, Tyron kind of, and then I'm like, yo, he kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he coming with a lot more phone, a lot more phone. And then they kept hugging. And then we like, man, this fight getting this fight getting kind of weak. And then out of nowhere, hey, and bro, we talked about this on the show when Alejandro was on here. What is embarrassing in sports to me? That was in embar- bro. He he fell completely, lost all feeling in all of his extremities, face first, bop, and like, bro. That was sad. Like it was low key sad. It was sad because it was to Jake Paul. Bro, no, no, it it was it it wasn't that. No, it was sad because this man man is getting cooked and his mom is smiling. Maybe it was fake. See what? See what? Why do we always do this? Why? Why is every time Jake Paul fights? Do do you see Le'Veon Bell wanting some smoke? I did see that. I want to see what's good with that. Bro, did you do you remember Le'Veon Bell in the building this year? Boxing. He knows his stuff. Always. All he, he walked around every day like this. <laughs> walked around every every time you see him warming up, he's warming up like this. I don't know if that means he can box or not, but I don't either, but he thinking about it. If if he get in the ring against Jake Paul, I'm gonna be there. Ring side. I might, I might join you. <clears throat> 
Hey, matter of fact, we're going to ringside this year for an episode. Um, and we're going <laughs> to do an episode at the, at the fight. Um, cause I ain't never been ringside. Like I want to hear the punches. You know how like you go to an NBA yeah. game, you hear the conversation, you hear the boys talk crap to each Violent. other. I want to hear the pop, 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 pop. But the worst thing ever I've ever seen, which was way more embarrassing than getting knocked out, was it was this was like real life sad. Like this kind of almost it didn't hurt my heart, so I was putting a lie. But it was just real life sad. Frank Gore fighting Darren Williams. Darren Williams, yeah, bro. I didn't want the highlights. I was like, damn, Frank. Bro, I Frank was over there getting. Not only was he getting cooked, I him get pushed down like getting pushed. Just, the job to set it up. I was like, what is that? Yeah, it was it was just bad, bro. Like it was embarrassing to me. I I, I and I really wanted the NBA NFL to win, but the height difference, Frank. Looked like he was a little out of shape. He kept hugging. I'm like, man, this is this. And it's like, what made it sad is he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Darren he's Williams. A- I'm I mean, bad. The injury bug got him. Darren Williams. But it's just like, ah, bro, it was sad, bro. It hurt, it hurt my me for the NFL and for the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. But, we don't talk forever in the NBA. Bro, that, I, I'll just say this. Hell player. Yeah, as embarrassing as that was, at least he didn't uh, – at least he didn't get knocked out. If he got knocked out – You have something about getting knocked out, bro. Bro, I'm telling you. I, I'm not getting – like, I'm not getting knocked out, bro. You can have, you can have pictures of me getting mossed, beat, whatever. I don't have no picture of me laid out. Face first, tongue out. They talking about, are you okay? Got the light, you know. And then the dude doing backflips off the ropes, celebrating with his homies. And then as you come into your consciousness, you hear, I told you I was going to knock him out. Like you come back to your consciousness, and that's what you hear. Like, I mean, bro, just step in that ring. Anything can happen. I, I, I want to I wanna do some little, you know, some little boxing training. Once his shoulder get right, you know, hey, hey, and you know, wear my little thing with the pattern all on here. But as soon as the pattern come off, I'm good. I'm good on that. I'm, I'm, I'm good on any of that because that's not happening to me. It can happen to you. Would you ever? Oh, we already talked about this. Would you get me? We already talked about this. I talked about this. But it's not happening for me, no matter what. We'll see. Yeah, yeah I bet Jake Paul will, will will get you a good price. We'll see what oh, happens. Wow. Y'all about the same weight class? Weight class? Weight class. Oh, what weight class would I be in? You guys are about the same, yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah, actually. But I, if I had to fight, I'd try to get in that one ninety five. How much weight could I? No, 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 no. no. I try to get like one eighty. One eighty. I try to slim up heavy. Cause I'm like one, I'm like 200 walking around on the daily. All right. So, yeah, I need to drop some weight. Uh, but on another note, did you see Elon Musk's Elon Musk's tweet today or yesterday? Good for him. Giving over 11 billion dollars in taxes. Good for him. But all you seem to care about is the Cybertruck, bro. What are them, ta- Kevin? Kevin, question. What do taxes do? Taxes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, for the most part, my understanding is that uh, taxes you pay to the government so they can uh, invest in. I think it's like uh, road work, um, military, um, unemployment, and I think benefits for other people. I think taxes just kind of. You pay out of your own pay to pay for the other thing, worldly things. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, Like the infrastructure, the freeways you drive on. Yeah. Yeah. Electricity. How how, how much taxes does the U.S. get every year? Uh, In the trillions. Huh? In the trillions. Is it? Kevin, Google search. 
I'm looking that up right now. Listen, the government doesn't spend the money that they like, like they should, in my opinion. That's that's what I was getting. That's what I wanted to get out of this whole conversation. We're, people are like, oh, yeah, $11 billion. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, they ain't going to use that. Give me the cyber truck. You know what I mean? Free. Free. They, they do it for self-interest and like, you know. Free debt. Very, very uh, malicious ways. And, you know, it's very corporate. I guess, like, it's all politics, as they say, you know, which is kind of the sad reality that he's trying to do something good and give back to society and hope and hopefully, because I don't think all taxes are used poorly, right? I think some of them are used, you know, good, but I think majority, majority or some of it's, you know, there's that black, you know, budget, you know, people just just the whole we spend so much on military every year i feel like you know we're, we're a military superpower you know usa is we're here you know we know who we are yeah i mean i, I just think i mean we're in 23 in february 2020 we was in 23.3 trillion of debt yeah, we are in so much debt, but I don't think it's ever going to matter. Put somebody in the slammer. <laughs> I don't think that's going to fix anything. But people, yep. Put somebody in the slammer, bro. Be held accountable. Bro, there's so many people doing shady stuff that, like, our entire government will actually collapse if we put every single person in the slammer, like, at once. I think we've been like there for a long time. Get invaded during that time, probably. I stayed at some hotel, and it had like the number of our debt. Like, it was in Atlanta. It literally had the number like on a billboard right outside my window, and I was just looking at the number like, "Wow!" Like, it can't like. I don't understand what's the point of keeping track of that. Like, what is? Right, right. I, I don't, I don't get it either. Cause we're never getting out of that. We're never getting out of it, you know. And I think we know our who government the debt too. To who? China, China, for the most part. Oh crap! Like the U.S. dollar is like the world currency, so I don't think it'll ever really. Crap. So I'm like, I'm not gonna change. We're just gonna always owe money and never pay it back. I feel like. Wow. Wow, that actually like wow, that actually sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not really with that. Like if, if, if I don't fine the not because I will say, bro, like there are billionaires just like him who you know how he's like giving eleven billion. There are people who just like pocket that shit, bro. Like don't Yeah, but this is my thing. If if the U.S. really wanted everyone to pay their taxes, they wouldn't allow you to have loopholes in the system. They'd change the system. That's because the people who are like influencing those people who make the rules are the same people who want to keep their money in the pocket. Bingo! Bingo was his name of. That's what I'm saying. Look, ain't gonna change none. Just send me a cyber truck to my address because I'm the you know only He's trying to be like a good, like, uh, I don't know a word, you know. He's trying to be a normal person with, like, because normal people live within the rules of everyone else because he knows he can step outside of it if he really wanted to. And he's trying to say, you know, I'm trying to be like, live under the same structure as everyone else, even though I know I could not if I wanted to, like so many other people with his net worth. So I respect it, even though that much. Was- all the ways it should be. I respect the gesture. Do I respect it? Freaking cyber truck. That's all you care about. Do I respect it? Probably. I don't know if there is a respect about a man doing what the law says you have to do. So I don't really. Do I respect it? Nah. I mean, it's just. Do now, now, do I respect a man publicly lying saying a truck is going to come out at this time and it's not gonna? 
That's a different, that's a whole different story. Publicly lying. So how do we even know he's going to pay those taxes? He already lied once. Is he going to lie again? True story. I don't know. But my, I, I'm out of it. I'm out of it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right. Elon, if you listen, Elon, if you're listening to this, man, I support you, man. I support you, man. I support you, my brother. Hmm. But the people want the taxes paid, and the truck can get come out too. Like they can both happen. So, balls in your court. I pass it to you. Handle it. Definitely. Over and out. And I just got the Model X. I'm about to try to get the new one. Try to trade Only it. Model X in the East Coast. No, you're not, bro. That might be a lie, but I'm one of like the. Uh, it's only like a hundred in the East Coast right now. Only like a hundred of the new one in the East Coast. Probably less than that. You're done with the flexing, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, sorry. I got off track. I got off track. Um, as you know, Christmas time's coming up. Kevin, give us your your most famous holiday tradition. Um. I get a lot of traditions in my family, but the one that's the uh, the biggest tradition is every Christmas um, we have this thing called the Gorilla Awards, and it basically I have a very big family, so the Gorilla Award is basically a trophy to the person who did the most in the family, kind of as a, a pay of respect, basically. Um, so last year, uh, for an example, my cousin had a baby. So she got the Gorilla Award for trying year after year to have a child, and she finally just had a child. So she was given these this award, um, and that's probably the most famous quote or most best tradition that my family does. Nice, so, yeah. Ronnie, what you got? Um, what was the question again? Give me the question. Holiday? Do you have any holiday traditions? I mean, I did when I used to live at home. It's been a while since I've been home for the holidays, you know, with football. But Are you going home this year? No, I will not be home this year. No. I can't walk, you know. Hey, still. you still can't walk, bro? I can't walk, bro. I'm still not walking, bro. I'm on the way, though, pretty close. You know, well, get your – you at the facility huh? on your leg. I was You're in already? the – on the crutch – because I'm assisted with the crutches. So you can walk? No, I can't. I'm Bro, crutching. I'm sure I saw you on two feet. No. Walking? Standing? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but we used to help my dad put up the Christmas lights and then help my mom put up the tree. You know, decorate the tree. My mom, I guess. Christmas tradition. I uh, I guess, man, it started. Uh, I don't know when it started, but we just started doing this Christmas, this Christmas video thing, and uh, we've done that for probably about five years now. So I guess that's a thing now. We always try to take a little Christmas card, which. I'm in my mom's office. As you see, look at that right there. 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 Yeah. Okay. Do the Christmas card, which I think a lot of people do that. It's not really a tradition thing. Um, and then last, you know, we do a Christmas party. Well, these aren't really traditional things. Crap. I guess we got no traditions going on. My mom doesn't let us open gifts early. <laughs> Even though we're kind of past the gift phase. I'm a grown man, really. But now we really got nothing. I guess a Christmas video. It's about the only thing we got. What are we doing this year? I don't know. Brianna's the uh, choreographer, if I said that right. Um, but man, it's a great Christmas time. Jesus was born in baby form. Amen. Um, baby. Came here for you and for me. And yeah, that's it. Shout out to to Jesus. Don't forget it. The reason for the season. Um, what do we want for Christmas? You know, I just want to uh, 
I don't know. Uh, let me think. Maybe I got I a should... golf cart the other day. We have process to go a little bit faster. I wish it, you know, the, the healing process. Wish it, wish it would speed up. That'd be a great gift. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. Um, I, I, I think I, uh, there's something I need. Something I need. So, uh, man, I don't like gifts. I don't like gifts. But I don't mind gifts of things that I need. Like one time I had all these watches. Well, I didn't have that many watches. Yeah, I had all these watches. And my friend bought me a little watch holder. Like, bro, that was very nice of you, bro. You know, weird stuff. That was very nice of you, bro. And then one time I needed a... All right, I can't think no more. But I like it when you get something you need as opposed to... Just yeah, to, just to get a gift because no yeah. offense, I can kind of buy whatever I need. Practical, practical. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, Kev, what do you want? Honestly, I have no idea. I, something practical would be awesome, but I, uh, you know, I, uh, I haven't really of- thought about it. What? What was that? A giant bag of candy corn. I, you know, <clears throat> maybe a bag of pretzels. Maybe you know those Halloween pretzels. I think those would be fire. Good old pretzels. Just what I need. What else do we have, Kev? Uh, we also have um, Andrew Whitworth. Four and years old, sir. Playing one of the hardest positions on the field, if not top two. Left tackle. Um, playing it at forty years old. Sheesh. Is that hard? Man, keeping up with the best athletes on the field. I mean, is it hard, bro? Is it hard? I mean, I could sit here all day and. Talk. I mean, let's just be honest. Are you gonna play till you're forty? Well, let's be honest. I don't know. Is playing to a 40 really a hard thing or a want thing? It's pretty hard, bro. You have no idea how you're going to feel physically at 40 or even 30. Very true. And you gotta- but, but, yeah. but if you really want to keep going, I feel like what a lot of guys really can. Keep up with what your mind wants it to do. Say it again. What if your body can't do what your mind like remembers you doing? I feel like it can though. Some cases it literally just can't. Like your body's just failing on you. Of course, of course. But I mean, bro, I don't want to play top 40. I don't even care if I'm even if I'm like the best. <laughs> a, I mean crap. Brother, like, woo, 40? I'm going to do this thing for 40. Like, Tom yeah. Brady clearly is a quarterback. I mean, it's not hard to play. I mean, there's no. Physically, yeah, physically. You literally like, play a whole game of quarterback and not get hit. Impressive, bro. He's in the trenches every play, bro, at 40 years old. That's that's really hard. So, I got to give kudos, the shout-outs to my boy. You know. He's tripping, for sure, doing that. Um. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's true, but uh, I mean, <laughs> what, we'll, we'll see him later this year. So he'll be playing. Oh, who they got tonight? Uh, who they playing tonight? Browns. Uh, right? I don't know. No, Browns was Vegas. Vegas. Mm. I don't know who the Rams play. No, I have no idea. Um, bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. Who's Lewis Hamilton? Bro, you don't know Lewis Hamilton's probably, you know, one of the best. No, he is one of the best F1 race car drivers in history. And he got robbed from his world championship, you know, this past weekend. Not this past weekend, the weekend before, but it was it was 
Disgusting, bro. It's disgusting. Oh, oh gosh. Tell, wait, wait, wait. Give us the whole details, bro. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how this happens. Because there's layers, bro. It's he was up from the second car 11 seconds. There's 11 second difference between him and the next car, and there's only like seven laps left. And then all of a sudden, another car gets in an accident. So now the yellow flag comes up, and now everyone has to slow down and like just kind of form a line. And then at first they told them that they're not going to let the cars like the, when I say they, I'm talking about like the, the stewards, the, the referees of the, of the drive. They told informed all the cars that they wouldn't be able to like retake their positions. So they had to stay in line. And then, so, so Lewis Hamilton didn't change his tires because he heard that he didn't want to lose his spot. Cause you could win the race on the yellow flag, like in that line, the race could end like the laps are still being counted as they're getting the crash site cleared and all that. So there's races that ended like literally with them just driving in a straight line and whoever's in that line wins. So he couldn't leave that line to change his tires or he could lose the race. And then later on, like a couple laps after that, they said that they could do it. So he wasn't, he would, he wasn't able to do that still because he would have lost his place and the car behind him which was the guy who actually won the race this time. Like he was able to change his tires. He got fresh tires and he got to get his place back in second. And then they restarted the lap with one lap to go, bro. With one lap to go, they restarted lap. But the crazy thing is they weren't supposed to restart that lap at that point because all the cars has, they didn't retake their positions yet. So the steward, the referee like made the call himself to just restart it and let them race for one lap with the top five cars like in front and everyone else doesn't matter where they are. Like we're just going to leave them. So he broke the rules for this race just so they could race it out. And like Lewis Hamilton didn't have new tires and new guy and the guy behind him had new tires and he beat him on that last lap, bro. He beat him on that last lap and won the whole thing. And that's how it ended. It was crazy, bro. It was so crazy. Like I woke up at 8 AM to watch this. You care about F1 like that? I walked the, the championship. This, this was the last race, bro. These two racers were tied. And whoever won this race between them two, like, won the whole cup. So they were tied from all the races throughout the season. This is the last race of the season. Whoever wins between these two wins the like, championship. He, he was up with 11 seconds, bro. And then this whole, like, fiasco happened, and that guy got him with one lap to go. It was crazy. Lewis it was Hamilton. It was sad, bro. It was stolen from him. Sponsored by Mercedes. Yeah. That, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, that's who he drives for. Yeah, Lewis Mercedes Hamilton. is the team. His yeah. salary is $55 million. Yep. Now, without endorsements or sponsorships. I'm not pocket watching, but that's just what it says when you type in his name. He's Lewis. 36. He, um, so he has seven world champions championships right now it's the only one of the only records that he hasn't broken yet he's broken every other record most race wins um most laps led um you name it he's probably broken it um so like this This last race was wild like ronnie said this guy's a brit he's a brit yeah he's from britain that's it's it's a popular sport there he's a freaking brit he's british yes mate wow wow Wow. Okay. And this is, int- wow. I mean, 55 million, this must be a, a pretty big deal. A lucrative sport, bro. It's like you, when you were playing polo with all your little friends, it's like, it's the, the sport not getting into it unless like you have some bread, but Lewis Hamilton wasn't like, he didn't grow up rich. That's why people really like him. Cause he really like, he really just came up as like one of the best drivers and Mercedes picked him up. Wow. But you money to like be in the sport growing up his dad like worked hella jobs to just like support him racing yeah it's a very so, exp- netflix bro it's crazy is you should oh, watch it that's on netflix yeah but the 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 whole show would be on last season so there'll be a new season on it on this current season that'll come out probably early next year but wow, the one bro, what is this fight what is this f1 is it this Wow, I'm, bro, I don't know nothing about F1, bro. It's insane. Bro, I, I didn't either until I watched the, like, you know, 
the Netflix series, you know, like the Monaco Grand Prix, bro. You've probably heard of it. It's one of the biggest races in the world. Like, it's, uh, Suggs went to it, Sizz went to it one year, bro. Like, it's one of those things that, like, you would just, like, anyone, it's like an event type thing. Bro, let's pull up. Guru Punch? We're going to have our own yacht at the Monaco. Bro, Grand yes. Prix. All right, hit up your plugs, bro. I'm ready. If you're the plug you're listening right now, vouch for your case now. Plugs, hit up Marlin. So we have a yacht. I wonder right how fast those cars go compared to NASCAR. Oh, faster, way faster. That faster? I'm not gonna say way faster, but they're definitely faster and their courses are way more like bro. Hard. Like it's not a circle, but like the courses no, are this is turn- crazy dangerous. Yeah, so Formula One cars, they uh, they experience the same G-forces as uh, jet pilots. And then, oh yeah, God. they go up to 200 miles an hour, and they face, like, 7Gs, 5Gs in the turns, and, like, it's 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 wild. Bro, this is just wild. This is wild, bro. I'm about to look this up. Yeah. I need, I need to... I, I didn't get into the sport until last year when I watched Drive to Survive on Netflix. Yeah, bro. I know. I went and watched NASCAR, and I was like, "Yo, this is like, this is legit." I was a big fan of NASCAR. Um, You'll definitely uh, like it when I went and saw them race. Oh wow, your head is literally exposed in F one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's that sucks. Oh, the, the the new design of the car with the halo. That they added recently, it increased um, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? safety by milestones. So before their head had, is exposed, no? And it, yeah, well, it still is. It has like an umbrella over it almost. Shout out my boy Lewis Hamilton. He should have won the whole thing. You know, he's about to come out next year going crazy, showing no mercy. Max, you know, he's a great driver. Whatever, woo be woo 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 woo. You know, but he he just didn't win fair and square. That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, is that fact or fiction? No, it's, it's fact. I think I think Lewis was definitely robbed on the last race, but throughout the season, it, it comes down to the FIA and needing a whole rework. Throughout the season, Max was driving great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, Max, Max definitely earned his right to be in that spot to like win the championship, right? Absolutely. Like he's. Like, if he would have won fair and square, no one could say Max was lucky. You know, he was really that dude. But this last race, bro, he was getting beat by fucking 11 seconds, yeah. bro. The, again, like, it wasn't close. It wasn't even close. I see a loser. You got to see a cheat. The, the other, a cheat way. I see Max as a winner. Well, there's also another thing, too, with the uh, turn six on lap one when Verstappen pushed Hamilton wide. And Hamilton yeah. just ran off the runway and just kept going straight and never gave the position back to Verstappen. The stewards just let Hamilton go. And, uh, he shouldn't the track. That was a dangerous maneuver. Ham- Hamilton was driving off the track? Yeah, so- it's because he forced him off the track. If he would have turned him, listen, because another thing is if, Ma- if Max and Hamilton both crashed, like if they would have had like it did not finish, Max would have won. Yeah. Max would have crashed into him right there. Then he would have won it no matter what. So Hamilton's obviously, he wasn't going to turn into him. Like, I don't, if, if, and he was trying to force him into that position. He wasn't, he, he tried to like really force him off the road. Max could have turned in and he kept turning like up the, up the turn. So I really don't, I don't think he really deserved to keep that place. I don't know, though. I'm no expert in F1. Yeah, well, Hamilton kept first place. Uh, Verstappen still was in second the whole time. Um, but it, the only argument, quote-unquote, that can be made is when Verstappen was going into the corner, he took the lead in the corner. But in doing so, he pushed Hamilton off the track. So Hamilton went off and took first again. So that's the whole controversy around that. Um, but... But yeah, I mean, yeah, it was definitely a uh, a hard fought race. Wow. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Crap sounds wild. It's F one thing. Um 
I'm definitely going to have to watch this little race. Sounds like it was very controversial. In the whole season was. <laughs> wow. Freak. All right. What else have we got here? Um, I think that was kind of it for the, all the topics that we had. What what are we at? What time are we at right now? Uh, fifty minutes. Uh, let's wrap it up. I gotta go to dinner. All right, you want to hit uh Tiger Woods and his son, or just wrap her up? Oh, that one. Yeah, let's hit that real quick. Ooh, all right. It's restarting in five, four. Tiger Woods, his little boy. Well, first I was talking about Tiger Woods because I thought he was going to have to lose a leg. Yeah. Do you remember that? I thought he was going to, for sure, my dad's bringing in a pretty nice size package. I thought he was going to lose a limb. The guy didn't lose a limb. Man, let me just say this quick tidbit about Tiger Woods, just real quick, man. Let me just tell you. I'm not going to say keep doing things that aren't good for you or keep doing things that, you know, are bad, whatever. Tiger Woods, arguably one of the greatest golfers of all time. Word gets out, he's cheating on his wife, the other woman, blase, blase. Ever since then, he's had every single type of trouble because he's tried to get away from that lifestyle. Sometimes, guys, what you're doing helps with you being great. That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, he stops doing it, tries to do, you know, that, bro, you know, you know what I mean? Like, his life tremendously went, not tremendously, Went downhill, but definitely went took a nosedive. Um, but that's a whole nother story. I just thought I needed to get that in there. Um, Tiger Woods and his son, they're playing golf together. And uh, I hope he turns out to be better. Better? Yeah. I think he might be. How many kids does Tiger Woods have? He has one or two. Mm -hmm. Wow, dude, I totally thought he would have had more kids. Yeah, he's got two kids. What's his other kid? Why is that kid so young, though? Did he have kids with his old wife? I have no idea, bro. I don't know either. Uh, the ones, the oldest is 14 and the youngest is 12. Oh, that kid's twelve. Yeah. Wow, he looks like a like a little jit. He is a jit. Yeah, but he looks like he's like eight. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I I saw some clip they were trying to make all these comparisons, and I was like, yeah, I don't know about all that, but might be that dude. I mean, I feel like we're forcing it, though. Are we not forcing it? We are, but we forced LeBron, didn't we? Look, look how that turned out. Well, I'm saying we forced – they're forcing the comparison. Yes. Yeah, media, you know, you're going to be doing that, you know, before you know it, you and Steven. You're right. Hey, you're right. Commentator will be like, I play with the Ronnie Stanley guy, and I'm telling you, this kid right here, his son, I'm <laughs> telling you, the guy can block better than Ronnie. I mean, he does the same gestures. You know, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm gonna be doing that pretty soon here. Yeah. So, but still, I don't. Know. I haven't watched. Basically, what I'm saying is I haven't watched enough other than that clip to really compare the two. But man, what a Cinderella story that would be if that would be great. That'd be awesome. Ends up just taking that throne. I mean, we got a lot of kids who have kids. Wait, a lot of greats who have kids that can possibly be great. Bronny James. Tiger Woods, son. Uh, There's a lot to know about. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just said that and just realized I only know two. So That's a lot out there. He, uh, Manning, the little Manning, Arch Manning, whatever. Arch Manning, there it is. Um, yeah. All right, that didn't work too well. That didn't work well at all. They're out there though. You you won't know them until it's too late, and then they're like big. My son. Yeah. Uh, your daughter. 
Possibly. Kevin, you got one? You got a kid? I do not. Kev. Take your time, Kev. Take your time. No rush. I'm trying to tell you that. There's no rush. Take my your son, time. My son, man, keeps me up all night. Um, Big responsibility. Guys, I think we've come to a close. Um, Thank you for joining the number one injury reserve podcast in the world. You know, we're just happy that we can provide the content for you. We're sorry we couldn't have a show for you last week. Our boy Marlon, you know, dipped out on me. You know, I was just sad the whole day, but he told me he would Zoom me today and we'd make it work. Blase, blase. We're here right now on the Zoom Loom. We're here on the Zoom Loom. Guys, yeah, appreciate you for tuning in. Um, we'll, get a, we'll get another guest back going. Uh, in, in due time. Uh, but for now, wait, we won't, will we see y'all before Christmas? No, this will release. No, we're oh, released. Christmas you got a great Christmas. You know, tomorrow should be Christmas. And if we release this on the right day, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow will be Christmas. You guys have a great Christmas. You know, make sure you leave um, cookies and milk for your boy Fred Claus, you know. Um, Is that his name now? No, I think that's his his government name. Oh crap! I didn't know that. But yeah, man. Merry Christmas. Hug your loved ones, man. Somebody just told me that yesterday. Hug your loved ones, and uh, we love you. We love you, Kev. You take us out for once. Take us out. End us. Man, I'm not good at ending things. I'm only good at starting things. Ooh, that was a fire! We out, we out, we out! <laughs>